Hollywood, California, Monday, June 15th. The Lux Radio Theater, from its new home on Hollywood Boulevard, Hollywood, California, brings you Al Jolson and Ruby Keeler in burlesque. Lux presents Hollywood. Tonight, you will meet such great personalities as Al Jolson, Ruby Keeler, Cecil B. DeMille, Daniel Froman, George Barnes, and many others. Among the many distinguished guests in our brilliant audience tonight, I see from here one of uh, Paramount's directors, Mr. Chester Franklin and his wife. Mr. Franklin is the director of Sequoia, the picture now in production. And also, Catherine DeMille, Lloyd Pantages, Francis Langford, Eileen Pringle, and Gloria Swanson. Welcome, all of you. This entertainment is presented by the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, the beauty soap used by nine out of ten screen stars and by attractive women everywhere. As producer of the Lux Radio Theater tonight, and each Monday from now on, we welcome back Hollywood's famous pioneer director, a man who has made 62 of America's great motion pictures and has started more great stars on their careers than any other producer in Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Less than a decade ago, the movies were voiceless. Stars as celebrated as Wallace Reed, Rudolph Valentino, Theda Barra, Lillian Gish, and Francis X. Bushman had millions of admirers who knew them only as silent shadows. We spoke of our business as the silver screen, but its silence was golden for many an actor and director. Then a man came along who had been billed on Broadway as the greatest entertainer in the world. With his first film, The Jazz Singer, he not only made pictures talk, he made them sing. And he made me make museum pieces of my faithful old silent cameras that had ground out so many successful feet of film. Then he made another picture called The Singing Fool. And then he fell in love. She was a charming little Irish girl. In three months, they were married. Their marriage is one of which Hollywood is most proud. They have each scored separately in the theater, on the screen, and over radio. But we present them tonight for their first appearance together on the air. In lights above the entrance of the Lux Radio Theater is a glittering legend. And excited crowds along Hollywood Boulevard tonight read the words, Al Jolson and Ruby Keeler in burlesque. And now, for the first act of burlesque, in which you'll hear Al Jolson as Skid Brown and Ruby Keeler as Bonnie Smith. We're backstage at a burlesque show, playing a small town in the Middle West. It's a few minutes after the opening, and Lefty Moore, the stage manager, is standing in the wings, hurrying the chorus girls onto the stage. Oh, I sure don't see oh, don't you yeah, come on. Yeah. All right, girls. All right, all right. Come on, on stage. Come on, come on. The overture's almost over. Get a move on you, will you? Say, we ain't Give us a chance. No, no. Race horses got brains. Now go on. Shut up before I can a couple of you. You don't worry me none, the nerve of that guy. I think he owns the show. All right, Joe, kill the house lights. Okay, flash the orchestra. Well, here we go, Joe. Here goes the number one. Whose big baby are you? Whose big baby are you? Come on, pussy, why? Where to get those eyes? Oh, Lefty. Oh, yeah, uh, what do you want, Bob? Has Skid come in yet? No, no, not a sign-up. I've been in all of his hangouts, but I can't find him. Did you try the pool rooms? I just sent Jimmy. A nice spot Skid's put me in. The show started and my Jeep Comic ain't here. 
I ought to kill that bird. Oh, he'll turn up, Lefty. I've been working with Skid for almost four years now, and I never knew him to miss a cue. Yeah, I know, I know. But it's coming so close to missing him, it's turning my hair gray. You know, you want to do something about that guy, Barney? What? Well, it ain't none of my business, but why don't you marry him and have it over with? What are you stalling him for? He'd settle down if he was married to you. You think so? Why, sure, sure. Skid's nuts about you. He'd do anything you tell him. Oh, I don't know. We're supposed to be engaged, but he don't listen to me much now. How do I know he'll be any different later? Hiya, folks. Well, if it ain't the wondering boy himself. Hiya, Lefty. Hiya, Bunny. So, uh, you decided to come, huh? Sure, never keep the public waiting. That's my motto. Well, now, that's nice of you. Go on, get in your clothes, will you? You're on in five minutes. Okay, Lefty. Well, Bunny, how's the kid? All right, I guess. Nice time to be showing up. What's the matter? You ain't sore at me, are you? Would it do any good? <laughs> Atta, baby. Come on, you'll be late. You gotta change your clothes. Well, you know me, skid the fireman's child. I can dress sliding down a pole. Where have you been? Who, me? I've been playing pool. I suppose you couldn't make a shot thinking of me eating all alone. I told you after the matinee I wasn't hungry, didn't I? Just thirsty, huh? No, and I wasn't thirsty, neither. I just went out to get a little air. Oh, some nice pool room air. Ah, oh, cut it out, will you, Bunny? Did you have anything to eat? Yeah, I had a couple of hot dogs. Well, that's fine, that is. How do you expect to be funny on hot dogs? I'm going to send Jimmy out at intermission for some soup. But I don't want no soup. You'll eat it and like it. All right, all right, I'll eat it and like it. Get when you get in your makeup. Come in, Lefty. See you later, Bunny. Okay. Come to me, my melancholy babe. Cuddle up and don't be blue. Oh, Bunny. Hey, you, Maisie. Well, I want to see if the boyfriend got in all right. Yeah. That day Marco was looking for him just before she went on. Again? Yeah. Why don't you take a poke? Ah, oh, she's not worth it. What'd she want to see Skid about? To say goodbye, I guess. Goodbye? Is she going someplace? So don't tell me you ain't heard. Heard what? Marco's leaving the show tonight, going with the Manhattan Folly. Oh, Broadway, huh? Well, that's a nice break. Yeah, I could kill her. Well, there's one consolation for me. She won't be around Skid anymore. All right, girls, all right, now make your change. I'll hurry oh, up, will you I please? Am. Come on. Hurry. And hey, where's my coat from, babe? I'm a hurry for walking out on you like Look at her coming off the stage, putting on the dog already. Hello, Sitting on Maisie. Hello, Miss Marco. Do you hear my number? No, I was spared that. <laughs> oh, you're not jealous, are you, Maisie? Why, you slink eyed pony, I'll slide up against the wall. Don't you Cut me. it out, Maisie. No fighting, do you hear? Oh, I wouldn't hear her. I just want to hear a yelp. Hey, what's going on here? Nothing, Bozo. Maisie starting to scrap again? Of course not, Bozo. It's just a friendly argument. Sounded like the Battle of the Marn. Where's Skid, Bonnie? Did he get in yet? Uh-huh, he's downstairs putting on the putty nose. Yeah, that's a break. I was afraid I was going to have to play his part, too. Say, hey, Bonnie, your cattle king is out front again. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's a boy, he is. This is the sixth time he's been in to see the show. He fell hard for you, Bonnie. I'll have to see him sometime. He's the only following I ever had. When Marco here was singing, he... Hey, where did she go? Who? Marco. She was standing here a second ago. Yeah, until she heard where Skid was. She's probably downstairs by now, gurgling her fond farewell. <laughs> Marco. I'm just putting on my makeup. Go right ahead. How's the house, Marco? No, oh, a little cool. Oh, they'll warm up. Way like liking up there and take a few falls from. I don't know why it is, but the audience always likes to see a guy fall flat on his pants. Funny, ain't it? Yeah. Oh, Skid. What? You coming to see me off tonight? Say, that's right. You're leaving, ain't you? Well? Gosh, I don't know, Marco. I'd like to go down and see you off, but... I got a date with Bonnie after the show. Oh, Bonnie. Skid, why don't you get wise to yourself? What do you mean? That kid's no good for you. Well, you've been teamed up with her for four years, and where has it got you? No place. Well, she's holding you back, and you don't know it. Holding me back? Oh, say, don't you believe it, Marco. Bonnie's okay. Why, anything I am, I owe to her. And listen, when she says the word, we're going to get hitched. Oh, yes? Well, it's 
your funeral skit. No, oh, no, you're all wrong, Marco. Bonnie's the best thing that ever happened to me. Holy mackerel, there's me cue. So long, Marco. Try to see after the show. Hurry up, Skid. Come on, hurry up, will you? You're on. Okay, baby, I'll panic him. Watch the ball I take on the entrance. Holy cats, that guy will kill himself taking those falls. Come in, Maisie. Finish your train? Yeah, what's on your mind? Telegram just came for Skid. Telegram? Yeah, I thought maybe you'd want to take care of it. Hand it over, Maisie. I'll get it to him later. Hmm. Wonder who's broke now. (laughs) Maybe somebody's cashed in or an accident. No, nothing's wrong. Telegrams for Skid are only touches. But that one's heavy. It feels important. They're always important to the guy that sends them. Oh, gee, how Skid takes those falls. I'm glad that was his last one. He'll be coming down in a minute. A couple more like that and he'll come down through the ceiling. Oh, say, did you hear about Marco? Something else? Yeah, she ain't singing her last number tonight. Get in the earlier train. Why? Don't ask me. Say, I'd better scram. I'm due for the baby number. Hiya, Maisie. Excuse me, Willie. I'm on a minute. Sure. Skid, come in here a second. Well, honey, did you hear me panic them? Did you hear those laughs? Yeah, and I heard the falls, too. Listen, I tell it. What are you limping for? Who, me? I ain't limping. You hurt yourself, didn't you? No. You did. Oh, Skid, when are you going to cut it out? Cut what out? Taking those falls. They're in my routine, ain't they? That doesn't mean you have to break your back, does it? Oh, Bonnie, you got to make up your mind to one thing. I'm a whole comic. Don't waste no time trying to clean me up, because I'd be a flop. Say, when I was a baby, the first thing I reached for was a custard pie. What's the use of kidding all your life? Ain't you never going to be serious? Don't you want to get ahead in this game? What do you mean, get ahead? We're working all the time, ain't we? I ain't hanging around Broadway making touches, am I? What do you mean, get ahead? I'm talking about you getting where you belong. Broadway! Boy, if I had your talent. Why, there ain't nothing could stop you if you decided to step out. Say, how do you know I'd be so good? I could be a big flop, too, in a real show. There's a tip-off. You're scared. You're yellow. Say, how many times are you going to pull that one out? How many me? times are you going to make me? Come in. Howdy, folks. Come on, Lefty. This fight ain't private. Hey, I'm glad to hear it. What's the fuss? Ah, uh, Bonnie's riding me because I ain't got no ambition. Yeah, and I'll leave it to you, Lefty. Ain't he a staff for sticking in burlesque? Shouldn't he be framing new stuff that'll get him somewhere? Yeah. Shouldn't I be George White and have my own show and sit in a box office? I can't get steamed up over this Broadway stuff. You're a hit on Broadway, so what? What does it get you? It gets you a lot of jack to begin with. But Bonnie's right, Skid. It's time you were stepping out. For instance? Well, for instance, uh, Earl Carroll had a scout out to St. Paul to see you last week. Earl Carroll? Well, yeah, sure. He came back after the show and asked me all about you, Skid. Hey, didn't you hear from him? No, I ain't heard a tumble. Well, I guess you ain't. Oh, you'd have told me. But you'll hear from him. And when you do, grab it, kid. Wait a minute. What's the matter? The telegram. What telegram? It came for you. Here, open it, open it. All right, take it easy. It's probably just another touch that'll set me back about 50 bucks. I remember one well, time... Well, what is it? Holy mackerel, listen. What? Have a chance to place you in Manhattan Follies opening next week. Stop. Is there any way you can get out of your present engagement? Stop. Can't get you $500 a week or maybe more. Stop. Leave salary to me. Stop. Great chance. No comedy and short present. You'd have to be here by Sunday for rehearsal. Why, Max Levy. Max Levy, the big agent? Well, I'll be... Well, there you are, Skid. <laughs> Somebody's kidding me, I guess. Somebody's kidding me, you mean. That's right. Say they didn't mention Bonnie Lefty. What's the idea? I guess I can answer that. I know all the answers. What's the matter, honey? Don't you dare call me honey. Say, what are you bawling me out for? Get out, will you, Lefty? Huh? I want to speak to this guy alone. Okay. Say, what's the idea of all this temperamental stuff, Barn? If the telegram ain't a fake, it's a chance you've been raving about, ain't it's it? It's your chance, all right. Your chance to be in the same show with that little hypocrite you went nuts about when I was in the hospital in Des Moines. Who, who? You know darn well who. Oh, you mean Marco. Yes, Marco, Marco, Marco. That's who I mean. Why, you're crazy. Why, this tele... What's this telegram got to do with Marco? As though you didn't know. What show is Marco joining? Why, she... See, that's right. It's the same show, ain't it? That's a coincidence. Yeah, it's more than that. It's a conspiracy. What do you mean by that crack? I mean the whole thing's a frame-up between you and Marco. 
The two of you beating it together and neither one of you had the nerve to come clean. Oh, this telegram was a surprise to me. You're crazy to think that. Yeah, a pleasant surprise. Holy mackerel, will you take a tumble of yourself? It's a joke for you to be so jealous of that kid. Jealous? How of what? A bum comedian who ain't got a laugh above his hips? Say, if you was to fall for a girl that meant anything, I'd wish you luck. But that empty-headed little brat, I ain't jealous, I'm insulted. Well, you can stop blowing off steam and cool off, because why? Because I ain't going. Who said you wasn't going? I said it, and that settled it. Oh, it does. Since when does what you say settle things? Well, it settles this one. Oh, come on, Barney, let's forget it, will you? We'll stick together, kid, and as soon as you say the word, why, we'll take a walk over to the license bureau. What do you say? That's us, I guess. Especially, Barney. I know. Well? Skid, I'm sorry for what I said. I didn't mean it. Sure. Kiss me, Skid. Oh, honey, gee whiz, I... Hold me tight. Tight, Skid. It'll be a long time before we see each other again. But I ain't going, Bunny. Oh, yes, you are. This is your big chance, Skid. You're not going to pass it up for me or anyone else. But, Bunny... Will you two love us get up here? Come on, Skid. Okay. Well, it's about time. Come on, come on. Will you get out there and do your stuff? Okay, let's be all set, Bunny. I'll be seeing you out there. Watch the laugh. I get on the entrance. Lefty? Yeah? Get some of the packed skids bags. She's leaving right after the show. Okay, I'll take care of it. Go on, get out there, Bonnie. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 look who's here. Little Lucy Twinkletoes. How are you, Miss Twinkletoes? I beg your pardon. What for? What did you do? Oh, you think you're smart, don't you? Smart? When I was a little boy in school, I took the first prize. You did? Yeah, the teacher told me, take it, and she made me put it back. <laughs> Oh, boy. Dad's digging up the old one. Oh, did you ever hear about the man who liked oxtail soup? Oxtail? <laughs> That's going too far back. I hear you're going to a party tonight. Yeah, I'm going to a party tonight. Would you like to come along? There'll be a million laughs. Will we have a good time? I will. We're going to play kissing games. I don't like kissing. Why? It breeds germs. Come on, lady. Let's get sick. <laughs> Have you played kissing games before? Sure. The last part I was through, we played a game called Play or Pay. How do you play it? Well, they blindfold the boy and he reaches out for the girls. The first one he catches either has to give him a kiss or her handkerchief. How did you make it? Oh, this will kill you. I came home with a tablecloth. <laughs> Professor passed the gravy. <laughs> Yesterday I heard a lover sigh. Goodbye. Oh, me, oh, my. Seven times he got aboard his train And seven times he hurried back To kiss his love again And whisper Toot, toot, tootsie Goodbye Toot, toot, tootsie Don't cry The little choo-choo train That takes me Away from you No words can tell How sad it makes me Kiss me, tootie And then Do it over again Watch for the mail I'll never fail. And if you don't get a letter, then you'll know I'm in jail. Don't cry, Tootie. Don't cry. Goodbye, Tootie. Goodbye. Swing it, baby. Should have been out front tonight. Gee, Bonnie, you are swell. Never mind that now. Well, Lefty? It's all fixed. Skid, you're fired. Huh? Can. What for? You're going to New York. I got two guys packing your bags, and I just phoned for a reservation. But wait a minute. I told Bonnie that now, I wasn't... Now, forget what you told me. I'm running this partnership. You're leaving for New York, and you're leaving tonight. <laughs> So long, darling. You're right, won't you? Sure. 
sure. Every day, Bunny. I'll be awful lonesome without you. Gee, I'll be an awful sap without you, kid. We ain't never been apart before. As soon as the season's over, dear, I'll come right on. Maybe I'll be a flop and I can come back soon. You can't come back. You're fired. Oh, I didn't think of that. That ain't so good. Forget it. It's sink or swim now. I don't like the way you said sink. Well, how do you like the way I say swim? Well, I, I guess that's me. Gee, I don't know how to say goodbye, baby. I ain't never said goodbye to you. Just, just kiss me, Skid. Oh, gosh, honey. Oh, I'll miss you, Skid. I love you, Skid. Oh, gosh, I'll miss you. I'm lost already without you, Bunny. So long, darling. I'll wire and I'll write. Every day, Skid. Every day. Goodbye, Bunny. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Skid. Goodbye. <laughs> As we pause in the Lux Radio Theater's presentation of Burlesque, starring Al Jolson and Ruby Keeler, I'm going to ask you to listen to a very interesting conversation. In this brief interval, we want you to meet one of Hollywood's youngest and most charming stars, Cora Sue Collins. Here she is now, Miss Cora Sue Collins in person. <laughs> Cora Sue, just how long have you been in Hollywood? now. I see. I don't believe I know many movie people who are eight. What do you do with your time? Well, I've got my doll, Bedelia. I have to take care of her. Then there's Rusty. He's my dog. He's an Irish setter. And I train parakeets. Then I go horseback riding every day. But I do all that only when I'm not making a picture. Yes, I suppose you're too busy then. You think you'll keep on making pictures? Oh, yes. I want to be a grown-up star someday. Well, I think when you are, you're going to be a very pretty one. <laughs> Thank you. I hope so. I'm taking care of my skin just like one up stars do with Lux Toilet Soap. I've used it ever since I came to Hollywood, just like my friends mm, Joan Crawford and Joan Blondell. That's the only kind of soap we have at our house. Mother likes it, and so does Sister. <laughs> Sister won't even take a bath without it, and neither will Bedelia. <laughs> That's very nice, Cora Sue. Thank you. And you're right in saying that Hollywood stars must have lovely complexions. They can't risk dullness, tiny blemishes, enlarging pores. In other words, cosmetic skin. These Hollywood stars, like most girls, use rouge and powder. But they avoid dangerous pore choking by using Lux Toilet Soap, the soap whose active lather goes deep into the pores, removes every trace of dust, dirt, stale cosmetics. Before you put on fresh makeup during the day, and always before you go to bed at night, use Lux Toilet Soap. Buy several cakes tomorrow. We return now to Burlesque, the story of Skid Brown, played by Al Jolson, and Bonnie Smith, played by Ruby Keeler. Several months have passed since Skid left to join the Manhattan Follies, Bonnie is still on tour with the burlesque company. In her room in a small town hotel, she lies huddled on the bed, reading the morning paper. Her friend Maisie enters. Morning, dearie. You're up kind of early, ain't you? Yeah, a little. What's the idea? I couldn't sleep. Oh. Any word from Skid yet? Not a line. Gee, I'd like to brain that guy. How long is it now since he wrote to you? Well, I don't know. About... Six weeks, I guess. Just a big Broadway man. <coughs> Boy, success must have hit him right between the eyes. No, Maisie, Skid ain't the kind who get, gets a swelled head. It's, it's something else this time. The thing I was afraid of. Marco? Yeah. Mm. I've been kind of following him in the Broadway gossip columns. Here, get a load of this. Well, let's see. Oh, yeah. Skid Brown, who wows them each night at the Manhattan Follies is a wow to Sylvia Marco of the same show. They may be seen together every p.m. doing the hot spots along the main stem. Well, that's that. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. Nothing? What do you mean? You're still in love with the guy, ain't you? Sure. I guess I'll always be in love with him. But if Skid don't want me, 
Well, I ain't the clinging vine type. Oh, but listen, Bonnie. Excuse me, will you? Uh-huh. Hello? Oh, hello, Harvey. Pretty good. When? Well, all right, Harvey. Pick me up about 11.30. Bye. Who was that? Remember the fellow we used to kid about? The one we called the Cattling King? Yeah, sure. He used to sit in the front row every night. Well, that was him. Harvey Howell. He's a swell guy, Maisie, and a real guy. He wants to marry me. Has he got any dough? I guess so. He owns a couple of ranches. A couple of ranches? Sure. He's taking me out after the show tonight. I promised him I'd give him my answer then. Want to dance, Money? Thanks, Harvey, but do you mind if I don't? I'm a little tired tonight. That's all right. Pretty near time to be leaving anyway. Yeah. Bunny, did you think over what I asked you about getting married? I've been thinking about it, sure. Well? Harvey, I don't know how to say this, but do you mind waiting a little longer? Well, take all the time you want, Bonnie. I'm not in any rush. It ain't that I'm trying to stall or anything, but the show's moving back east, Harvey, and I want to see Skid. Just once more. Okay, Bonnie. You understand, don't you? Sure, I understand. Well, thanks, Harvey. You're a grand guy. Hello, box office, Manhattan Follies. I'm sorry, we're all sold out for tonight. Eight weeks in advance. Okay. Hello there, Mr. Kent. Oh, hello, Skid. What are you doing, counting up the shekels? Yeah. They tell me you want to see me, Mr. Kent. I do. Sit down, won't you, Skid? What's on your mind? You, Skid. Skid, I'm going to tell you something straight from the shoulder. Yeah. I've been managing Broadway shows for a long time, so you can take it from me. I know what I'm talking about. Skid, you got to cut out your drinking. Oh, me? Don't give me that. You went on that stage last night, so lit up, you couldn't even see. Those falls you were taking were on the level. They got laughs, didn't they? Sure they did. But that isn't the point. Skid, you've got this whole business right in your lap. You can sing, you can dance, you can make them laugh. You're a big hit. But take it from an old-timer, Skid. Drinking and show business don't mix. That's all. But, Mr. Kent... That's all, Skid. Oh, Skid. Skid. Hello, Marco. Been in to see Kent? Yeah. What'd he say? Nothing much. Hmm, so you won't talk, huh? All right. What are you doing after the show tonight? I don't know. I kind of figured I'd get a little sleep for a change. Oh, come on with us. We're getting up a party to go to the hot spot. Oh, count me out, Marco. I want to stay home and write a couple of letters. Oh, I see. Who to? Well, Bonnie, for one. I ain't written to her, oh, for such a long time. Honestly, I wouldn't blame her if she was sore as a boy like me. Listen, are you still thinking of that kid? Sure, why not? I thought that was over long ago. I know. Well, it ought to be. What are you going to do after she's married? Still write mash notes to her? After she's... What are you talking about? She's going to be married to some rancher guy. Who said so? I got it from one of the girls in the troop. She wrote me all about it. Married? Oh, there must be some mistake or something. There's no mistake. It's all set. Holy gee. Why didn't she tell me? Why didn't she let me know? Ah, oh, brace up, Skid. The world hasn't come to an end. Why, you're Skid Brown, a big guy on Broadway. Why worry over a cheap little burlesque... Shut up, Marco. What? I said shut up. Wow. Well, well, that's the way the wind blows, Yeah, that's mister. the way the wind blows. Now, get out of here and let me alone. I want to think. <laughs> One moment, please. Hello? Hotel Colton. Go ahead. Hotel Colton. I'll see if he's in. Hotel Colton. Hello, operator. This is room 707. Did you get that number? Oh, thank you. Hello? Hello, Winter Garden? I'd like to speak to Skid Brown, please. Yes, I'll hold the wire. Is he there, Bunny? They're going to look. I hope they don't find him. I can't understand why you... Hello? Want... Skid? This is Bonnie. Yeah, Bonnie. Where am I? Well, why, New York, of course. Got in yesterday. Yes? I caught the show last night, Skid. You, uh, you were all right. I'm at the Carlton. You want to come over after the show tonight? All right. I'll see you then. Bye. He's coming, huh? Yeah. 
What's Harvey going to say? Harvey knows about it. He's coming, too. Hmm, it's going to be a nice party. I can see that. That must be Skid now. Want me to answer? I'll take you. Uh, hey. Hiya, buddy. Hello, Skid. Step right in, boys, and meet Bonnie Smith, the greatest little trooper in the business. Hello, Bonnie. Lefty, I didn't expect to see you. <laughs> I've been traveling around with this, this guy, and he's got me all tired out. Oh, getting old, Lefty, getting old. Hello, Skid. Amazing, I live and breathe. Uh-huh. He's like old times. Wait a minute, where's Jerry? Well, I am. Girls, I want you to meet the greatest little songwriter in the world, Jerry Evans. Hiya, girl. What do you think? Get over that, that piano, Jerry, and show him what's what. Always ready to apply, friend. Oh, where's a nice, comfortable chair? I want to go to sleep. Try this one, Lefty. Go to sleep? Say, that's no way to start a party. Oh, no, well, you let me alone. <laughs> Softy, huh? Well, Bonnie... Let's take a look at you. Gosh, you're looking grand. I'm all right. Swell, that's swell. I... I hear you're getting married, Bonnie. Yeah. Who told you? Oh, those things get around. I just want to tell you how glad I am. It's great, simply great. Why, I... What's the matter? Nothing. What do you look at me so funny for? I ain't said nothing wrong, have I? No, of course not. Well, what's a long jaw about? Ain't the new guy treating you right? Sure, he's great. But what business is it of yours? What business is it of mine? Say, I suppose what happened to you is none of my business. I, 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 I suppose I'm going to forget you're the only girl in the world I ever gave a hoot about. Yeah, me and how many others. I got tired of being a mobstein. Are you still with that Marco dame or is she cold turkey? Ah, oh, lay off, Bonnie. I came here when you asked me to. I'm tickled like that to see you. I try to tell you you're the works, and what do you do? You start riding me. I suppose you couldn't come alone. What was you afraid I'd do to you? Well, you wouldn't have me shake these guys, would you? They've been with me ever since last night. Yeah. I suppose you're the king of the nightclubs now. Yeah, that's me. I'm giving all the little girlies a great big hand. You better go home early and get some sleep. You look rotten. Ah, forget it, Bonnie. We only live once. Say, listen, Bonnie. When are you going to marry this millionaire of yours? You didn't tell me. Sometime in the fall, I guess. Well, what are you going to do till then? Going out to live on the ranch with him and his sister. You mean your chuck and show business? Yep. Then the old partnership's broken up, huh? Going to leave me to struggle on alone. The rate you're going, dear, you won't have to struggle long. The nightlife will land you right out in the alley with the rest of the husbands. Is that so? Yeah, that's so. Well, if I do get the gate, there are the shows. They always need comics, dearie, and as long as I can make them laugh, I'll be all right. Hey, Bonnie, you ain't told me whether I'm good or rotten in the show. The jury was in long before I got here, Skid. <laughs> Gosh, this is funny. You were telling me for years what a riot I'd be if I got a chance. You pushed me to my chance, and I click. And all the time I'm wishing that you were here to see me get away with it. You finally get here and see me, and we don't even talk about it. I don't know. I'm wondering if planning for things so long don't take all the kick out of them. I suppose nothing can be as good as, well, as good as you think it's going to be. No, I, I suppose not. Jerry, Jerry, play something lively. Oh, sure. Hot dog. Come on, Bonnie. Let's dance. You and me, huh? Come in. Oh, hello, Harvey. Come on in. Thanks. Oh, I, I didn't know you were having a party, Bonnie. Come on and join us. This is Jerry Evans. How do you do? Oh, yeah. And Lefty Moore, you remember him. Well, sure, sure. How are you, Mr. Howell? Oh, sure. Yeah, sure glad to see you again. And I know you've heard of Skid Brown. Oh, yes. Yeah. How are you? I certainly enjoyed your show last night. <laughs> I don't know when I laughed so much. Thanks, thanks. But I wasn't so good last night. Now, that's what Bonnie said, but you, you seem good to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful hard to please Bonnie. You know that gag about my severest critic. Yeah, I've heard that one. Say, I hope I didn't stop your music. Uh, uh, won't you go on, Mr. Evans? For sure. What would you like? Well, I don't know any of the new songs. My favorites are all old, like uh, In the Gloaming. <laughs> Bonnie sang that for me once. Yeah, come on, sing it, Bonnie. Yeah, Bonnie, sing it, sure. It's so nice and gay. Say, what do we celebrate anyway, a wedding or a funeral? Shouldn't we be toasting a bride and singing gay ditties with the groom? Skid! Hey, mister, I wouldn't have spoken about that if you hadn't. In a way of speaking, I'm your successor, but uh, I don't want to dwell on my good fortune except to assure you that it'll be my aim to make life happy for Bonnie. And uh, I'm sure you'll be glad to know that. Sure, I'm glad to know it. Why wouldn't I be glad to know that Bonnie's going to get along all right without me? 
Well, what I'm saying is, why can't we be gay about it? Why can't we have the wedding march played with pep and ginger? And why can't I be given a bride away? Stop it, skin! Why? Why will I stop it? Who's got a better right to be given a bride away? It shows there's no hard feelings. Why do people get sore and crabbed when they lose out? Why don't they join the festivities? Come on, Jerry, play the wedding march and play it fast. It's a dancing wedding, folks. Watch my smoke. Watch my smoke. Here comes the bride, here comes the bride. Da 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 da. Come on, everybody, whoop it up, whoop it up. Here comes the bride. Stop him! Stop him! Yes, you better go. I'll go, Mister. I'm leaving right now. Goodbye, Bonnie, and lots of luck. Here comes the bride. <laughs> We pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is Cecil B. DeMille speaking to you from Hollywood. Al Jolson as Skid... And Ruby Keeler as Bonnie return in just a moment for the conclusion of the Lux Radio Theater production, Burlesque. In the meantime, I'm going to have you meet one of Hollywood's most famous cameramen. Most people think of a cameraman as a fellow who puts his cap on backwards and grinds away at the crank of a camera. As a matter of fact, the first cameraman never touches the camera. He's an artist who paints with lights and shadows, giving the screen depth and third dimension. The only cranks on a set today are the directors. The cameraman who will speak to you is Mr. George Barnes of Warner Brothers Studio. He has photographed both of tonight's stars many times. Mr. Barnes. That's very gracious of you, C.B. But folks, we don't really think directors are cranks. We think of them as fellow sufferers. You see, a cameraman and his director are practically the only people who have to work every day while a picture is shooting. No actor appears in every scene. Mechanical crews can be changed, but the poor old cameraman, he just goes on and on until he drops, or the director does. As Mr. DeMille says, a cameraman's first job is lighting. In more ways than one, he has to show the stars in the best possible light. And right along that line is a point that comes right home here to the Lux Radio Theater. A cameraman has to make a girl look absolutely perfect. He has to take care of shadows, unusual contours, and other things that can't be helped. So believe me, we have no time for faults that can be helped, like a bad complexion. That's something the girls must take care of for themselves. And the way nine out of ten Hollywood stars do that is by using your Lux toilet soap. It's the official soap at Mr. Deluxe Studio, Paramount, and other great studios in Hollywood. And if you want to see how it works at Warner's, Mr. DeMille, well... Just take a look at Ruby Keeler. Okay, George, that's a fine fade out. The lights go up for the third act of Burlesque, starring Al Jolson as Skid and Ruby Keeler as Bonnie. Three weeks have passed, and we're in the office of Mr. Kent, the manager of the Manhattan Follies. Skid showing the signs of dissipation and looking very tired. He's coming in the door. Hello, Mr. Kent. Oh, hello. Hello, Skid. Sit down. What is this, Mr. Kent? Another temperance lecture? No, not this time, boy. I gave you your last lecture about three weeks ago. Well, what do you want to see me for? I'm writing you a check, Skid. A check? I ain't supposed to be paid today. I know. You're getting a check anyway. Your last one with this outfit. What? You heard me, Skid. You mean I'm canned? That's right. I warned you, boy. I told you what was coming. You wouldn't listen to me. I'm sorry. Well, there's your check. Can't, huh? All right, so what? I can get another job like that. Wouldn't be so sure, Skid. And I'll tell you this. You'll never find one hanging around in the hot spots. Lay off, will you? I know what I'm doing. You didn't the other night when we picked you up singing the wedding march at the top of your lungs? Cut it out! Cut it out, you hear? Okay, Skid. It's none of my business. Just thought I might hand you a little advice, that's all. All right. I'm sorry, Mr. Kent. I... I guess I ain't myself these days. I don't know what's the matter with me lately. I'm, I'm just a little shut, 
pieces, I guess. But I'll, I'll catch on again, though. And when I do, I'll be back to see you, Mr. Kent. So long, Skid, and lots of luck. Swing it, will you swing it? This is a rehearsal, not a funeral. Give, will you give? Now, come on. Hey, Lefty, Lefty, listen, will you? Oh, what do you want? What do you want, Bozo? Don't you see I'm rehearsing the number? I know, but this is important. Skid is here. He huh? wants to see you. Skid? Where is he? Out at the stage door. Gee, he looks terrible, Lefty. Like he ain't had nothing in a week. I guess I better see him. All right, all right, girls. That'll be all for a while. Well, I'll be back in a couple of moments, Skid. Okay. Kid. Oh, Lefty. Gee, Lefty. How are you? What's what's happened to you, Skid? Where oh. you been? Oh, just knocking around. After I got canned, I, I, I kind of hit the chutes. Oh, boy, you sure look it. Uh, <clears throat> any prospects of a job? No, I, I've been looking around for a month, but I guess they don't want me, Lefty. Then I, I heard you was putting on a new show, and, well, I... I come around to see you about it. You, you want a job with me? Yeah, that's right. In burlesque? Sure. What do you say, Lefty? You got a spot for me? Oh, gee. I, I don't know, Skid. Oh, please, Lefty, give us a break, will you? I need it bad, honestly, awful bad. What about the liquor? Oh, liquor, say, that's, that's all over with, Lefty. That's finished. Yeah, well, it seems to me I've heard that before. Uh, it's on the level this time. Well, okay, Skid. Uh, I'll give you a chance. Thanks, Lefty. Now, listen. We open in a week. Do you think you can get on your feet on that time? Sure, sure. All right, then. All right. Now, listen to me. Remember it. You got to be here for every rehearsal, and you got to be here on time. Don't worry, Lefty. I'll be a new guy. Wait, you'll see. Bozo. Bozo, did you find him? Yeah, I got him. Where was he? The usual spot. Holy smokes. How is he? Oh, bad. Three days before we open and he pulls this one on me. No, it's going to be tough, Lefty. There's only one way out and I got to take it. What's the dope? Now, look, I'll tell you what you do. Run out and shoot a wire to Bonnie. Tell her I need her. Tell her Skid needs her, but tell her she's got to get here right away. Okay, Lefty. Telegram, lady. 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 Sit down, Bonnie, sit down. Did I say it was great to see you? Yeah. Well, it, it's more than that. What's it all about? Skid. Of course, I knew it was Skid. What's happened? Haven't you heard anything about him since you was here last? Nothing. I read that he was out of the follies, but that didn't surprise me. He was heading for that when I saw him. Yeah, yeah. That afternoon, he danced out of your room. He danced himself right out of show business. He went on a grand bust, and he ate, played since... Oh, I gave him a job, but he's been handing me an awful ride. Here I am. I'm opening tomorrow night, and up to now, he ain't rehearsed half of this stuff. Honest, Bonnie, I, I don't know which way to turn. I know what's in your mind, Lefty, and what you want me to do. So I'm going to save you the trouble of asking me. Huh? I'll do what I can. Oh, gee. Gee, you're an ace. How long will you stay? Till you get your show right and Skid gets straightened out. Oh, thanks, Bonnie. Thanks a lot. Say, I, I don't know what I'd do without you. There he is now. Huh? Oh, gosh, look at him. Hello, Lefty. Skid. Where's the rehearsal, Lefty? Am I early? Yeah. Yeah, for tomorrow you are. I, I was only... Skid. Huh? Who is that? Am I seeing things? Do you see her, Lefty? Sure. Sure I see her. Don't kid me. I've been seeing things lately. How are you, Skid? It's, it's really you. <laughs> oh, gee, oh, Bonnie. Oh, don't, Skid. I'm all right. How are you, kid? Let me have a look at you. You're looking great. But you've been crying. No, I haven't. Oh, you can't fool me. I've seen you cry too often. But what are you doing in this dump? Oh, I'm on. 
Why is Mr. Lefty, eh? Mr. Lefty the fox? To get his rotten soul from me, call you out of the well, grave. it wasn't exactly the grave, well, yes. don't waste a minute around here, honey. I'll open all right. Nobody's got to worry about me. You know me. Skid, the fireman's child. I'm always there. Sure you are. But you've got to take care of yourself, Skid. You've got to start tapering off now. Okay, Bunny. You're the only one I ever knew that had any sense. Oh, you're not ashamed of me, Bunny, are you? No, Skid. I've been an awful sap, but don't ride me, will you? Bunny, don't ride me. I won't ride you, Skid. That's right, kid. I've listened to so many lectures, honestly. I carry my own slides. Don't you think you better get some sleep, Skid? Nah, sleep. I ain't gonna bother about sleep. Oh, gee, Bunny, it's great to see you. I told you I'd be an awful sap without you. Now, you never was a sap, Skid. You got more brains than all the comics put together. You make mistakes, but who don't? But after all, Skid, fun's fun. Lefty's opening his first show tomorrow night, and without you, he'll be sunk. He's been too good a friend of ours for you to throw him. Gee, Bunny, I don't think I could ever make sure it. Sure you can make it. I'm all shot, oh, honey. Oh, honey, you can come out of it. You think I can? I know it. You wouldn't kid me, would you, lady? I would if I could, mister. I would if I could. Say, where's your cattle rustler? You remember he got sore at me that day, didn't he? I don't know. Sure he did. For singing, Here Comes a Bride, remember? Here comes a bride, here comes. He's fainted. Tony G, loosen his tie. I'll take care of him. Do you think, Bonnie, do you think I'd better postpone the opening? Let's try not to, Lefty. I'd hate to see you up your first opening, and it wouldn't look so good for Skid either. Poor Skid. Oh, now, that's all right, Bonnie. There, there, that, that's all right. I'm all right, Lefty. Get me some water, will you? Look, don't you think we'd better get him over to the hotel? No, let him stay here a while. Okay, I, I'll be back in a second. All right. Skid, look at me. You'll be all right, honey. Nothing can stop you. You'll be all right. You'll knock him dead. You ain't started yet. You'll be all right. You gotta be all right. You just gotta be all right. How is he, Bonnie? All right. He's on his way up from the dressing room. Well, he's on next. Do you do you think he can do it? I hope so. Well, he almost fainted in his last routine. Hiya, Lefty. Oh, hiya, Skid. You all set, baby? Sure. What's this going to be, my song? Yeah. 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 Uh, cut the opening routine, Skid. No falls tonight. Go right into your number. Cut the falls, huh? Okay, Bonnie. You're the boss. You all right, Skid? Oh, say, folks, thanks. For a minute, I thought I was back in Manhattan Follies. <laughs> Lefty's swaying out there. He's gonna fall. No, no. He's okay, Barney. But seriously, folks, I'm glad to be here. And right now, I'm gonna sing a little number for you. One I like a lot. A little music there, Professor. Make it easy, kid. I'll make it. People brag. People boast. And consistently drink a toast To a place that a lot of them place At the top of the list Are they wrong? Are they right? Is there a reason for their delight? I must live in doubt Till the day that I find out Is it true what they say about disease? Does the sun really shine? All the time To the sweet magnolia blossom That everybody's gone Do folks keep eating possum Till they can't eat no more Is it true What they say about Swanee Is that dream by that stream So sublime Do they laugh Do they love Like they say in every song Is it true that's where I belong. Is it true what they say about Swanee? Is that dream 
by that stream so sublime? Do they laugh? Do they love? Like they say in every song, if it's true, that's where I belong. I do, oh, Skid, you were swell. I knew you'd be. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm all right. Do you... Do you think you can go on? Being all right? I can, Bunny. If you stick by me. Sure, Skid. I'll stick. For good? For good. Oh, gee, Bunny. But... What about the cattle rancher? Oh, it's all right. I explained it to him, Skid. You see, when I left, I... Well, I had an idea I was coming here to stay. Oh, Bunny, I'm crazy about you. I can't get along without you, sweetheart. You won't even have to try. From now on, it's you and me together. For better or for worse. Yeah, better for me. And worse for you. Ah, there you go. Always clowning. <laughs> Al and Ruby will be back in just a moment. We are honored tonight by the presence of Daniel Froman. D.F., as we call him, produced the first play that my father, Henry C. DeMille, and David Belasco ever wrote. It was called The Wife. When the play opened, it was a failure. Nobody came. Naturally, Mr. Froman decided to close it. My father and Belasco had spent a year writing this play. All their savings were gone. They were desperate. So they went up to Mr. Froman's office. One took him by the throat... The other took a heavy octagonal ruler from his desk and shook it in his face, saying they'd kill him if he took the play off. So Mr. Froman kept the play running. He says they changed it to suit him. But in any case, it ran five years. Everyone in the theatrical world knows and respects this pioneer of the theater. We revere him as an artist, philanthropist, and gentleman. The 85-year-old dean of the American stage, Daniel Froman. Cecil, you're very kind. No. No, I'm saying what I've felt ever since I was five years old. Well, that was when I used to chase you out of the box office for annoying the treasurer. <laughs> Even now, it hardly seems possible that you're old enough to have a radio program of your own. No, I am just starting in Radio DF. Do you remember when I was just starting as a young actor at one of your companies? Yes, I remember paying you the fabulous salary of $40 a week. That included my wife's salary, too. But I was willing to work for any salary. For the man who started the Barrymores, Ethel, as I remember, was the first to join you. Then Lionel, wasn't it? Yes. And then the two of them in their little brother, Jack Barrymore, to design our bill posters. Well, why, don't you, why don't you get him to design one for that big show you're producing on July 1st, the Actors Fund Benefit? The F... It's been a privilege to have you here tonight. It's nice to be here, Cecil, and be part of your great enterprise, for no theater in history has reached so many people as your Lux Radio Theater. From your father and mother, you have inherited the highest traditions of the stage, and I know you are true to this trust. Thank you. Very much. Grand old gentleman. I have just written an article for a national magazine on the ten greatest fools in history. Perhaps I should have made it eleven and included the singing fool, the character that Al Jolson made the most famous fool of all. For that picture, the singing fool broke every box office record of its day. And here they come. The singing fool and his dancing wife. Ladies and gentlemen, 
the Jolsons. <laughs> Al and Ruby, you have enjoyed wealth, fame, and success. All the things most people dream about. Ah, but that's nothing, Mr. DeMille, compared to the thrill I got when little Al Jr. spoke his first word. Now, what do you think was the first word he ever said? He said, Daddy. Ah, uh -huh, no, Al. He said, Mama. Did he? Well, didn't he? If you say so, I guess he did. <laughs> but, oh, that kid. Good, solid arms and back. Is he a husky? What a baby. Honestly, Mr. DeMille, I don't like to exaggerate, but you've never seen ten such wiggly little toes. Hmm. Takes after his mother, doesn't he? Those twinkling toes of rubies. Well, but one way he takes after his daddy, great big strong knees, a born mammy singer. <laughs> his, his toes from his mother and his knees from his father. His good looks, I suppose, from Lux. Yes, sir, just like his mama. She's a Lux lady, aren't you, Ruby? Of course I am. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, Lux soap is what makes all us Jolson so handsome. <laughs> We've had, we've had countless requests for two things, a song by Al and a dance by Ruby. Unfortunately, we haven't time for both, so which shall it be? Oh, that's very easy, Mr. DeMille. I'll decide that. We're going to have a dance by Ruby. Oh, uh, just a minute, Al. I've decided. You're going to sing. Well, how, how, how are we going to compromise? Al will sing. Well, <laughs> that's how it is. I guess you can see now, folks, why they call me Al Keeler. <laughs> Pretty girl is like a melody that haunts you night and a day, just like the strain of a haunting refrain. She'll start a park, a marathon, and run around your brain. You can't escape, she's in your memory. By morning, night, and noon, she will leave you and then come back again. A pretty girl is just like a pretty tune. A pretty girl is like a melody that haunts you night and day. Just like the strain of a haunting refrain, she'll start upon a marathon and run around your brain. You can't escape, she's in your memory by morning, night, and noon. She will leave you and then come back again. A pretty is just like a pretty Thank you, Mr. Jolson. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your announcer, Melville Root. Mr. DeMille returns in a moment to tell you about next week's play. The makers of Lux Toilet Soap wish to express their appreciation to our capable cast and to the great studios who have cooperated with us in presenting this broadcast. Our cast tonight included Wally Mayer, Victor Rodman, Eddie Kane, Rita Leroy, Inez Seabury, Frank Nelson, and Lou Merrill. Al Jolson and Ruby Keeler appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, as did George Barnes. Our producer, Cecil B. DeMille, comes to us from Paramount. Louis Silvers, our musical director, represents 20th Century Fox. And Mr. Daniel Froman is in Hollywood as producer of the Actors Fund Benefit. And now, here is your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Next week, our play is The Dark Angel. A vital romance played against a background of war. A dramatic triumph on the, on the Broadway stage and twice successful on the screen. This unforgettable drama will be presented on the air by the same stars who thrilled us in its most recent movie version, Merle Oberon and Herbert Marshall. Our sponsors, as well as Miss Oberon, Mr. Marshall, and I cordially invite you to be our guests in the Lux Radio Theater next Monday night. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>